Uh, in the early 1950s, when Francis Crick uh, discovered the double helix structure of DNA, he regularly consumed LSD. Uh, LSD at that time was completely legal, and Crick felt that it enhanced his mental and creative powers. He took low doses of LSD virtually every week, and he admitted that it was under the influence of LSD in a visionary state that he first saw the double helix form, uh, and it is that vision that enabled him to crack the code of DNA, and it's on the basis of that vision that he won the Nobel Prize, and he in fact is one amongst many scientists who have received vital information of a scientific nature uh, in altered states of consciousness. So, so that's the first remarkable thing about Crick, the Nobel Prize winner, the ultimate mainstream scientist that Crick saw the structure of DNA, the double helix structure, under the influence of LSD. But there's more. Our scientists today are absolutely, most of them, are absolutely against the idea of any kind of intelligent design in the universe. They dismiss it utterly right. as, a, as a new ploy of, uh, of creationism. They laugh at it. They ridicule it. They if, if, it just despise the idea. And yet the greatest scientist, one of the greatest scientists of the 20th century, Francis Crick himself, did not believe that the DNA molecule had evolved on this planet. And believe me, as a scientist, Francis Crick was far beyond those scientists who now dismiss intelligent design. And, and, and Crick, let's, let's mention that one more time, because that's probably one of the most critical things of Crick's entire career, I think. He did not believe that the DNA here came from this planet, or that's its right. origin was here. Okay. That's right. He, he, he didn't. And he published a book, uh, in, in fact, in 1981, called Life Itself, uh, which outlines this theory. And he came to the theory uh, entirely on scientific grounds. Looking at the DNA molecule with its fantastic double helix structure and its ability to code for the construction of cells and proteins, in, in fact, its ability to form beings of all kinds uh, as, we, as we know them, that this interaction between the double helix molecule of DNA and the proteins, in his view, was far too complicated to have just emerged by accident out of some kind of hypothetical primeval soup on planet Earth. Believe it or not, that's what most scientists claim, and I think those scientists are giving us a fairy story. They claim that, that the DNA molecule somehow just developed accidentally from different chemicals bumping against each other uh, on, the, on the early Earth. Crick, the greatest scientist in this field, absolutely denied that. He said there's no way, on, no way at all that the DNA molecule could have formed by accident on this planet in the time that was available for it. Now, does he go on, Graham, to talk about how he believes it got here? I mean, yes. are we talking about panspermia coming we from are talking about stuff? We're talking about panspermia, and we're particularly talking about Crick's version of panspermia, ah. which is directed panspermia. Crick didn't, uh, didn't subscribe to the view that the molecules of life are just carried randomly through the universe on comets and asteroids and bump into planets and start life. In his view, it happened this way. Uh, he envisaged uh, an alien civilization on the other side of the galaxy. He pointed out that there's been 15 billion years since the Big Bang and that there was time for life to have evolved on another planet before the Earth was even formed, and the Earth was formed about four billion years ago. And his suggestion was that, that life evolved on another distant planet, and eventually, after billions of years, it produced a highly intelligent creature. And that highly intelligent creature developed a technology that was far in excess of anything we have today. And they realized, and remember, this is Crick, Francis Crick, the Nobel Prize winner, saying this, not me. <laughs> they realized that their culture was doomed, that perhaps there was going to be a supernova explosion in the vicinity and that they would all be wiped out and that there was no way that they could physically escape from it. Uh, and he suggests that what they did was they took the most resilient life forms on their planet, containing the DNA of their planet, bacteria, which can survive in any environment, that they packed them into huge spacecraft, they froze 
billions in cryogenic suspension, billions of bacteria in, the, in, in these spacecraft, and they sent them off in the universe in all directions, hoping that those spacecraft carrying bacteria would collide with a planet in a suitable state of development and there would begin to reproduce very rapidly and the whole story of evolution would begin again so that life would be preserved, life would be saved. That was Crick's theory of directed panspermia and that's how he explains that the DNA molecule suddenly appears on this planet and from a situation in which there was no life, we suddenly have life reproducing and replicating all over the planet. What if it came to this planet through these portals that people see when they're under the influence of uh, ayahuasca. Perfectly possible. Crick, of course, did not consider that. He went far enough by suggesting that the DNA molecule couldn't have come from Earth, that it had to have been sent from elsewhere. But I do go into that possibility uh, in the book, that we may be, we may be dealing with a, a transdimensional attempt to seed life on Earth, and that having done that, those beings then maintain an interest in life on Earth, and they may have a very specific project for life on Earth that we don't know yet fully what it is, that they realized that the way, uh, the way to, to develop life is through the process of evolution. Uh, so they sent very simple organisms to this planet, but packed with the DNA of their planet, yes. and, that those, and that those organisms then began evolving, and they realized that eventually, it might take billions of years, but eventually an intelligent creature just like them would, could e would evolve on this planet, and that, and that that intelligent creature might, that, that, they, that they might have built into the DNA a method for that intelligent creature to access information that is on the DNA itself. This is, a, this is the very extraordinary idea at the heart of this. You see, the mystery that I'm looking at in Supernatural is why people all around the world in altered states of consciousness see the same things and have the same experiences. One explanation for that, and I devote a great deal of space to it in the book, and I take it very seriously indeed, is that in these altered states of consciousness, we may be accessing real parallel dimensions and the beings who inhabit them. But another possibility, if Crick's theory is correct, is that those bacteria that started life on Earth four billion years ago uh, contained DNA that had been genetically engineered, and that that DNA may, it is quite possible, DNA carries vast quantities of information which is used to construct bodies and beings, that that DNA may contain other kinds of information. It may, in fact, contain the entire accumulated knowledge of that hypothetical other civilization at the other side of the galaxy that seeded life on our planet. Uh, there is a thing called junk DNA. It's 97% of our DNA and we don't know anything about it. That's true. We think we know a lot about DNA, but all we know about is the 3% that is involved in genes. The other 97% of DNA our scientists are largely ignorant about, and that's why they tend to call it junk DNA, as though 97% of our DNA would be preserved down millions of years of evolution if it was just junk. Of course it's not junk. Of course there's something important to it. And scientists at Boston University, Dr. Eugene Stanley was the leader of the team, uh, discovered during the 1990s that junk DNA has astonishing properties. It has astonishing linguistic properties. I, I won't go into the full details here. I published them in, in my book. But uh, junk DNA has the same structure as all human languages. And Eugene Stanley at Boston University concluded that there must be a message written on our DNA. And what I'm adding to that is the possibility that it may be that message or those messages, perhaps an enormous interactive teaching machine that has been recorded on our DNA, which we may also access in altered states of consciousness. And that's why we all see the same thing, because we all have the DNA, uh, the same DNA, and that DNA is in every cell of our bodies, including in our brain cells. And perhaps a mechanism had been devised billions of years ago to enable us to access hard information on our own DNA, which can reveal to us the secrets of why we are really here. That is the other possibility that I take very seriously in my book and explore 
very seriously. I don't take a dogmatic position. I'm not saying definitely it's because there are parallel universes and real spirits, and I'm not saying definitely it's because there's an interactive message recorded on our DNA, but what I'm saying is that the evidence seems to suggest that it is one or the other uh, of those extraordinary possibilities. Either we, we enter altered states of consciousness and open a secret doorway inside our own minds that leads us through to other dimensions that are real but not normal, normally accessible to us, or it's a secret chamber inside our own minds, a hall of records, a chamber of archives that we are able to enter in altered states of consciousness, which contain vital information for our future evolution. What if, as you read in the Bible, the, the, the wording of fallen angels all has to do with this entry through this portal as well. Is that possible? I believe that it, I believe that it does. I think that it is, this, it is this extraordinary ability we have to enter altered states of consciousness and have experiences that are not available to us in, in normal states uh, that lies beyond uh, a huge range of mysteries. Uh, in, it lies behind a huge range of mysteries uh, in, in, in the human past. And it, it, it may be the case that, that uh, particularly if the spirit world explanation of this is the correct ex explanation, that beings are actually coming through that portal into this realm uh, and contacting us at a physical level as well as at the level of consciousness. And that perhaps would be where the idea of fallen angels come from. And why, if we read in, in Genesis 6-6, uh, why these, uh, these sons of God, as they were called, wanted to mate with the daughters of men and wanted to produce offspring from the daughters uh, of men. Change, exactly. Change the DNA, right? Change the DNA. Change the DNA. Uh, exactly as...